What's up, fellas? Welcome back to the Smoke Session 612. Good to be here. Damn. Get <laughs> it all the way down. I don't know why it stopped. didn't stop playing. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. That beef wanted some love, man. It just wanted some more love, man. Ah, but what's up, fellas? What's up? What's going man. down? Man. Man, let me tell you something. I'm going to the auto show this weekend, and I can't wait because I'm going to take a picture with the giant duck, and I didn't pop the gummy. I'm going to give a gummy to the guy on the hoverboard and tell him I'm going to fly to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> What's That's going right. on, Wade? <laughs> Man, look, hey, you already got know. nothing to say to that right now. <laughs> you already know. I, look, we just got done recording the goddamn What Up Doe show. I just poured me another shot, poured a little more oh. in my glass, and I'm still finishing this beer. <laughs> so, that means five minutes into the show, Wade's is going to be drunk. <laughs> look, the show will get off the rails. Well, at least you have five minutes of punk. <laughs> well, let's go ahead, fellas. Let's do this real quick. Let's do this. Bang. Cheers. Cheers. This nigga taking it to the head over there. Oh, yeah. Uh. So, I, was, I was looking around on YouTube. Right. And I found this guy. Has to be the dumbest robber in the fucking world really he goes into the bank pulls out his gun and drops his gun over the counter <laughs> reached over the counter tried to get his gun couldn't catch it so he turns around he runs out the door jump kicks the door on his way out <laughs> while his pants are falling down because he's sagging too much <laughs> if you gotta see the video, you can go ahead and head over. Uh, not right now, but you can go ahead and check out the, the Smoke Session Six One Two group page on Facebook. You, and the videos there, man. It's I'm in it over there right now. <laughs> it's the worst robbery attempt ever. <laughs> Too good. I enjoy it. So did he actually get away, or did he? Uh, uh he did end up getting caught because he didn't wear a mask and his face was on the camera. This nigga. <laughs> he said, how can I prove myself to be dumb as shit? I know. Motherfucker. Now, you're in a pandemic. You got an excuse to wear a mask. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Everybody else doing it. You know, this this story reminds me of, uh, especially when it com com combined with what Waze just said, reminds me of uh, a, a segment that my boy Latone Hart used to, Latone Hart used to do on his show called The 730 Show. And it's called Guess That Race. Where he, he, he tells the story of a, of a crime that happens or a situation, and you've got to guess what race the criminal is. Uh, I'm guessing that was a black dude. That's what I'm guessing. That's my guess. Actually, no. It was a white guy. Oh, my God. Oh, then it wasn't a drop kick. I can guarantee you that. He ain't got the athleticism oh, no. for that. I, 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 I didn't say a drop kick. I said a jump kick. <laughs> he, like, jumped it in the air and kicked the door on his way out. Okay, that makes sense. That makes more sense. I heard drop kick, so I'm thinking athleticism. I heard drop kick. He said drop kick. That's what he said. That's oh, what he said. Well, I meant to say jump kick. Yeah, because well, yeah, there's a big difference. I, but I thought since he was sagging, I mean, it just everything just sounds like it was a black dude, and that was wrong. So, see? See why racism doesn't work? <laughs> Guess what race? That was a fun game, man. I, I miss him, <laughs> oh, man. What a fucking great, great segment he had there. Guess what race? And he would tell a story like that and say, Guess what race the criminal was? So that was that was a very very uh, very fun segment he had. Uh, second dumbass comes from TikTok. Oh damn! There, there's this new TikTok thing out there. You know, people make food and and you know, present it on TikTok. 
Well, this motherfucker said he got sick one night, woke up in the middle of the night, and made him some night quill chicken. What the fuck? He took some chicken breasts, put them in the skillet, and poured night quill over them. What happened from there? Uh, he's got a bunch of views. <laughs> he's he's been hit up by Action Jackson. Uh, but apparently he didn't die or nothing. But it can injure your lungs. Um, well, no shit. Oh, heating up. Not yeah. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. You can you can really mess yourself up uh, with hot Nyquil. I guess it's not. <laughs> Just the whole thought of hot night will sound funny. Well, okay, all right. I was just wondering. I thought something else. I thought something else happened though. Well, the chicken dirt did turn blue. Well, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, oh boy, Sam ate ate green eggs and ham. So everybody knows that shit was mold. He can eat blue chicken, so that's not a big deal. Yeah. Colored right. food. Colored food got got accepted a long time ago. In in the video, the guy claims that that sometimes the steam, can, the vapors from it, can make you sleepy. Well, good well, for him. Nigga, that means you' about to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a noxious gas. What the fuck? Exactly. Well, he got a lot of views though. <clears throat> yeah, he got a lot of views. Yeah, fact, Action Jackson done. had hit his ass on Facebook. Who's Ac- Action Jackson? I thought was, he was dead. Wasn't Carl Weathers Action Jackson? Carl Weathers still alive, ain't he? I don't know. Yeah, he I, is. I know he played Action Jackson in the movie. Alexa, but there, there's a dude on Carl Facebook. Carl Weathers alive. That bitch said, fuck you. <laughs> I got uh, it. <laughs> but there's, there's, a, uh, there's a dude on Facebook goes by the name of Action Jackson. Oh, okay. And... and he he do these like blind reaction type videos. Okay, I got you. Uh, <laughs> according to my Alexa device, Carl Weathers is still alive. Alexa, is Carl Weathers alive? Carl Weathers is still alive. He's seventy four years old. He's seventy four years old, but that's not who you were talking about, though. No, no. But he's uh, he's Action Jackson to me. So you right. got to clarify. I don't know no fucking YouTube stars. Action Jackson is Carl Weathers. Okay. <laughs> and Vanity. Uh, y'all ready for a story? Always. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, you want to do some Bullshit. more dumbasses? No, fuck no. No, let's get a story. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I just wanted to prove out the point that it's better to have. It's easier to get uh, forgiveness than permission. I just wanted to prove that. Oh, okay. Oh, that's permission. definitely not what she said. Yeah, uh, we have, uh, actually, she did. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one is right along smoke session lines. Uh, you know, Snoop Dogg come out with a whole new breakfast line. Following the success of Snoop Loop cereal, ooh, he now has the Brodus Foods line. Good for him. Snoop Snoop has proven to be a pretty brilliant businessman. Oh yeah, uh, one one of the brands along the Brodus Food line is Mama Snoop Breakfast Foods. Hold on, I, I'm sorry. This is latest shit. I gotta respond to what OG just said. That he is becoming a brilliant businessman. I, I want to ask Cameron Diaz. He's been a brilliant business. I said he's become. I didn't say he's becoming. I said he has become. He has really been. He's really become a, a, a brilliant businessman. I was going to say because he had his own business in high school too. It wasn't exactly legal, but it was a business. But he's really turned uh, the Snoop brand into something. Something enormous and and kept it going for a long time. Oh, yeah. Something he could definitely pass down to his children. And he and he and he consistently find ways to reinvent that brand and and keep it keep it rolling, man. And, and I, I'm proud of Snoop. Snoop did good for himself. 
Uh, Mama Snoop consists of traditional breakfast staples as instant grits, oatmeal, maple syrup, and her own pancake mix. So, so first of all, I, I'm, I've never heard, I've never even heard of Snoop Loops, but um, and, but I'm proud of him, and I'm sure he's doing well with it. Uh, but I will ask, I do have, I do have a question though. Uh-huh. A question I, I want to ask to you guys. Is Snoop the coolest guy in entertainment? To me, he is. Mm, in entertainment? Yes. Coolest? Yes. I don't know, because Robert Downey Jr. is pretty fucking cool. So you and mean good so, so let me ask you this. If um if you were on, if there was a TV show and somebody said, "Bring the coolest guy in the business up up to the stage," you mm. think they would bring Robert Downey Jr. or Snoop Dogg? Oh no, they bring a Snoop. <laughs> I don't know, Robert. They're okay. So Snoop, the reason, that, okay, go ahead. Go I was ahead, gonna wait. say Snoop's famous. Don't get me wrong, but Robert Downey Jr. No matter how you put it, is still more famous. Yeah. However, no, he's not. Robert Downey Jr. don't make you cool. If you bring Robert Downey Jr. on, if you bring Snoop on, he boosts your cool. He no. makes you look cooler because he's there with you. Robert Downey Jr. don't do that for you. No. That's true. I had Iron Man on my show. Okay, a bunch of nerds is now watching my show because I had Iron Man on there. Yeah, I mean, and that's not to take away from, I mean, Robert Downey Jr., but Robert Downey Jr. also has a, has an interesting uh, past. Oh, yeah. yeah. But see, I mean, there was less than zero. People, y'all, y'all, y'all too young to remember less than zero. Oh, no, I remember less than zero. I remember fucking, he was in the Breakfast Club. I remember, I remember the fact that he was a pariah in Hollywood. He became one of his biggest stars. Yeah, and less than zero was the, when he had the scene when he got busted sucking somebody's dick for dope. Uh, yeah, and, and then it found, and then then it came out he was actually doing that kind of shit in real life. But see, I remember Robert Downey, I, Downey Jr. <laughs> he lost a lot of he me. lost a lot of cool points with old people back then. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't remember the stories of Snoop sucking dick. <laughs> no, no, ain't never been one. <laughs> so uh, uh, on that one, but. Awesome actor. I, I I do I I do love the way he bounced back. Uh, he he re- resurrected his career and and, uh, and and took it took it beyond where it was. So no knock on him, but yeah. I don't know. Is he cooler than Snoop? No, no. Look at Snoop can smoke weed with Willie. The Nelson. only way the only way Robert Downey Jr. would be cooler than Snoop <laughs> is if he showed up in the Iron Man costume. You think? Cause now I got Iron Man. Everybody. No, the only way he could be cooler than Snoop is if he crip walked in the Iron Man costume. Yo, that'll be fire in all blue, <laughs> in the blue Iron Man suit. Yo, that'll be fire. As hell. Freezing, man. That'll be the most amazing thing. Oh, shit! Talk about Snoop. One of the coolest shits I've ever seen is him sitting there on his uh. I can't remember GGN or whatever. Um, he was sitting there smoking a fucking blunt with uh, Kathy Bates. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't see that one. <laughs> I remember though a long time ago, and I don't know if y'all remember this when when Jimmy Kimmel show first started. When he first started the Jimmy Kimmel show, yep. Jimmy Kimmel used to bring a milk carton full of alcohol. And they would do shots all night with him and his guests would drink all fucking night during the show. Oh, <laughs> and damn. Then Fred came out and he brought Snoop out and Snoop was like, another, and he was like, I'll drink to that. And he brought him, Snoop was like, God damn, we can, you get me fucked up. We getting fucked up out here. <laughs> and he had a, cause he had it in a milk carton cause he couldn't show that it was alcohol. Yep. <laughs> Snoop was my like, because he just kept pouring. You know, you know, you can't out drink the, the, the cats like that, man. Now, and I, Jimmy people. Kimmel does good on the late show, right? But Jimmy Kimmel's best shit was when he was on the man show. 
Jimmy Kimmel's best shit was when that first late show first started and they was drinking. I'm telling you, you don't know what you was missing. They was getting, they would get, I tell you who was, who was drinking him under the table though. Uh oh, Martha Stewart was drinking that motherfucker under the table. Yo, she's one of the few people that could probably uh, outsmoke Snoop. Oh, she hang out. That's Snoop. That's a that's they yeah, homie. Snoop's road dog. They yeah. homie. They were on the show together. Who would have yep. ever thought that? Yep. They were on. They were no. I'm talking about on that Jimmy Camel show. They were on oh, there okay. together, and she out. She was drinking the motherfuckers under. Snoop was getting fucked. He was like, dude. The fuck? I ain't no drinker. I'm a smoker. You getting me fucked up? Man, she was just knocking him down. One more. <laughs> bop, bop. Oh, she drinking that nigga under the table. <laughs> man, Martha Stewart. I gotta find some old videos of that. We man. used to always make fun of Martha Stewart in the hood. Then she went to prison and we realized how much of a G she really was. Yeah, the moment G. she got out, she was like, well, fuck it. I already been to prison. I might as well be myself. And then all of a sudden, you seeing her smoking with Snoop. You sitting there baking with Snoop? No, I haven't seen her smoking with Snoop. Oh, she? So I've seen her smoking but with Snoop. I, I've seen her baking and shit. And, cause yeah, you, but, but if the fact that she's hanging with Snoop lets you exactly. know that she smokes. I've never seen her smoke, but the fact that she's hanging with Snoop, as tight as they are, you don't hang, you don't hang that tight with Snoop. Man, you ain't getting they high. road dogs. Man. Yeah. They, yeah, they yeah. like best friends. They're the true odd couple. So, so Snoop says something that was very interesting to me, and uh, I, I've, I've it, I earned a whole different type of respect for this artist since then. I've always kind of liked her, but after he made the statement, I realized that you know there's a lot we don't know, right, about people. But when Snoop was going through some changes uh, and trying to put some projects together, he said a lot of people that you um, that he respected in the industry turned their back on him, didn't want to touch it because they thought Snoop was trouble or that whatever. I forgot what all was going on in his world. And he said, you know who the realest motherfucker was out there? That, that came and made sure nothing fell off and made sure I take care of anything I needed, anything we had to do. She made sure everything got covered. And it was Miley Cyrus. He said, Miley Cyrus is the realest motherfucker in this industry. And y'all motherfuckers just don't realize it. Oh, yeah. Damn. Here's yeah, the thing. She's been, she been getting the Britney Spears treatment for a while. If you've ever listened to a Miley Cyrus interview, she's probably yep. one of the most down to earth uh, yep. artists you've ever heard. Oh, yep. yep, 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 yep. Her she, music she, is not a representation of her personality. Of who she she does her music, so it's business. Mm -hmm. Yep. She is doing what she's supposed to do to make to be successful. But you are so fucking right. And she didn't get a handout from daddy like like I thought. Oh no. No. She didn't work for that shit. She had to work to get where she is, man. Oh yeah. I, I saw an interview she's with her. I, yeah, she's a grinder, man. And she's and, and Joe is right. If you ever see an interview with her, you you really you really earn a different kind of respect for her. You can I, I see where what Snoop was talking about. And cause when I couple what what I heard Snoop say with what I hear her say in those interviews, I feel just like Joe just said. She 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 she's real real as fuck. Yeah. Yep. She's real as hell. I will say this though about Miley Cyrus. She still has a chicken butt. Yeah. Yeah, she she's a carpenter's dream. Yeah. <laughs> and she got to lay down and take a shit. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Flat as a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so. But that's my homie, though. I like I like mine. I'm, I'm, I'm my no, respects, yeah. baby. Respects. A lot of uh, respect for her. Right. But, you know, as, as part of the smoke session, I'm looking forward to the Snoop line of foods. I, I know you are. And I'm proud of him, but I, I probably won't partake. <laughs> I'm proud of him, but I, I, I probably won't partake. I, again, I never heard of Snoop Loops, so but it's actually it's actually a collaboration with Master P, and and that's his boy. You know, he oh, he, yeah. he speaks. He always speaks highly of Master P. Oh yeah, yep. he said Master P taught him how to make money. Yep, in this business, in this industry, he said before that it was just about the fame. Yep, yeah. Master P taught him how to make the money. And he also taught him how to invest it, uh, in himself and in his uh, his finances better. You know, Master P bought him, actually bought him a house in New Orleans when he first signed with, with No Limit. 
didn't hear that part, but okay. That's dope, still. But he did tell her. He did say that Master P taught him how to make the money. He said because he was making the money, 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 and we didn't. Re- I didn't. I didn't even realize that kind of money was in this industry. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that kind of money was being made. Mm-hmm. And this mother, he said, and he taught him the game. He taught him how to make the money. And and you know, it's 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 interesting because we all thought that was going to be a marriage made in heaven when he went to No Limit, and it turned out to be a flop on on the surface. Yep. Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't his best album, probably his worst, yeah, uh, and, and least successful. But he learned he it was so valuable to him. Yeah, yep. I think we still him. I think we still talk about Snoop today because of that time he spent with Master P. Yeah, but no limit. I mean, because every once in a while we still bring up Master P, and they ain't made no music in. Rarely bring up Master P. I I I I, I would say rarely. I, I I don't. He comes up in conversations I'm around. I never bring him up. We bring uh, up Master P when it comes to uh, conversations about doing right for the community, money, and being uh, responsible with your money in the African American community, and yeah. such situations as like this with Snoop. Yeah, he'll come up in conversations that I'm around, but I, I never, I'd never bring him up. Um, but it doesn't mean I, I like respect for him. I, I have utmost respect for Master P. Uh, Percy did very well for himself. Percy has shown. I met him down in uh, uh, Tennessee. Me and Latone with the Impact. We met him down there, and we were we were blown away because we weren't fans of him at the time, but. Oh, yeah. He proved we when we heard him speak and we talked to him just to listen to him. It's like this dude is fucking brilliant, right? So you 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 earned a different kind of respect for him when you either hear hear of him speak or you listen to somebody who talk about him in regards to business. But yeah, I, I don't see he doesn't come up in conversation. I, he he's not irre- He's irrelevant. He's what rich people. He's what rich people supposed to, what rich people normally do in this country. Fly under the radar, yep, and just yeah. be rich. Yeah, they fly under the radar and just be rich. Snoop is still in the spotlight. Master P oh, is no, maybe, not. maybe the reason why I say that I hear about him a lot is because he actually moved up here, and his son went to went to a high school up here and was playing ball. We heard a lot about him. So, so I, you probably hear a lot about him locally, yeah, because right. if he's Especially there, after the school burnt down. So, yeah, I mean that, that's. I'm just saying he's he's not in, he's out the spotlight, right, right. Uh, while Snoop is still in it, yeah. So being being out the spotlight makes him invisible to me. And by the way, folks, I'm dark on purpose. It's a smoke session thing. <laughs> I popped the gummy. I don't like to, I don't like y'all to see my red eyes. So I I, I, I keep that. I don't. I turn my spotlight off. So yeah, just get. But, uh, um, speaking speaking about. The money being made in, in, in the hip hop game. All right. There's a conversation that came up because DJ Academics opened up his big mouth. Oh fuck. And called all the old school rappers Dusty. Dusty. And broke. Dusty and broke. I ain't never heard this nigga DJ anything. So, so I, I've heard of him. I, I've heard about uh, him, but uh, that is that's the utmost disrespect. Uh, I have the utmost respect for the pioneers of hip hop, uh, and it is disrespectful to the to the entire genre to um, insult the old school artists of this genre because they were. They were taking chances that allowed you to be who you are, that allowed this whole genre to exist. They were taking chances, man. They, people, you, you have to really be there. People didn't want this to succeed. Everybody said it was a fad. Everybody said we were stupid for listening to it. It wasn't real music. If everything that you can think of that that tries to kill this that style of music and in his tracks they persevered through it and and you can't i can't do nothing but respect the old school i'm mm-hmm. sorry i i am going to side with the old school 100 percent of the times i don't care what you say you can say what you, now if you want to say you like this genre better than that genre so be it 
but you you can you can like them better without disrespecting them because them motherfuckers. It's like it's like disrespecting fucking Martin Luther King and the, and the civil rights movement movement. You know when you got when you they're the reason you got a right to vote, right? Mm-hmm. You know it's 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 it, to me it's equivalent. It's a, they are, they are the reason hip hop exists. I, that frustrates the fuck out of me, man. I'm I, sorry. I am gonna say something. It, you guys already know I like to dig deep on this on a lot of some things, and I like to look at a deeper perspective. And as far as I can see, this is DJ Academics, poor attempt at trying to curb the fact that he is on a career down a decline like no other he's already been on the decline over the last few years in these last few months his shit's really dropped i know on twitch his views he went from over a hundred thousand views on twitch per stream to less than 600 in the last couple months damn so this is his attempt to get people to watch him. Yeah, I, I, I have a, I, I have a, I have a soft spot um, for for the the pioneers of this industry. Mm-hmm. But his genre, uh, I was I was one of them myself. Um, I'm an unsung hero of of, of Detroit hip hop, um, but I came up with the pioneers, so I I, right. I I respect the pioneers of this industry. It, they, they're the ones that brought me into the genre. They brought, I saw them change music. I witnessed it. Uh, it. It just, it just bothers the fuck out of me, man. And, um, that's why I never, I will never let ways live down the fact that he disrespected the great Houdini. Man, he just Pioneers that changed the music that made this happen. A big knock. A big knock. The guy that made this fucking man, come on, man. They changed man. the game, man. The guys that, that these guys changed. Gang. When I tell LL. you, Run DMC, LL, Marley Sugar Hill Ball. Gang, uh, Marley Marlin and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Uh, 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 Big Daddy Kane, African Bambada, ba- African Bambada, and the Soul Sonic Four. They change. When I say they changed the game, there's a difference in the term. So when, See, now, when you when somebody say they changed the game, they're changing hip hop. They're doing something different in hip hop that hasn't been done. They changed music. Mm-hmm. Music. Period. They Not changed the game. the game in the great. They changed the game of music. They changed it. Uh, you know. Big Ed, finish the story. Let's, let's move on. Because I'm, I will, I will live in this rabbit hole. I will live in this rabbit hole. I got hey, throw a little right, caveat on there. What's and that, bro? Just speaking on OG's uh, saying that they changed music. You look no further than the '90s hip hop era. There would no, be no, look- there would be no today's pop. No, 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 bro. pop no, today. No, no, you look to '80s hip hop because. 90s hip hop don't happen. I'm saying 90s, no, 90s hip hop doesn't happen without 80s hip hop. So 80s hip hop changed music. 90s hip hop changed hip hop. 80s hip hop changed music. 90s they created a what, genre. 90s hip hop is what today's pop is based around. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There was not a, a category called hip hop. There was not a category called hip hop. There was when when Run DMC got nominated, they got nominated for best R and B album. There was not a category for hip hop. Hip hop didn't exist to them. It was a fact. Nineties hip hop changed hip hop. It didn't change music. Eighties hip hop changed music. They yeah. created it. it was nineties hip hop. Don't exist. It don't happen. No. Hip hop don't period. happen at all. Hip hop period don't exist without eighties hip hop. You rap. take them away, it don't happen, dude. Nope. It's a whole different. It's a whole different conversation. Yeah, nineties nope. hip hop changed what hip hop was. We made a eighties hip hop made a whole new genre of music. That's it. And and then and and you saw yes, you saw if you if if you evolve and you watch it. You, you for me, I'm again, I'm from the beginning. I was there at the beginning 
from where it took on a national stage. I wasn't in New York at the beginning, but from a national standpoint, I was at the beginning. Right. Where, it, where I saw hip hop go from using old R&B music to make music to R&B using old hip hop songs to make music. It's just, it changed music completely. I saw it change the whole landscape. I'm, what I'm saying is nothing to do with, and it's not saying that is incorrect. What I am saying is 90s hip hop and today's pop, today's pop is centered around the rhythm of 90s hip hop. I'm not saying the 80s hip hop isn't the, uh, is the thing, because the 80s hip hop is the probably the most important part of today's music, but it's the 90s hip hop that gives the rhythm of today's music. Uh, I, I don't. I can't. I can't. I can't totally yeah. agree with that. No, I can't totally agree with that. No, at all. Uh, not at all. Because if you if you if you know eighties hip hop the way I do, nineties hip hop is just a baby compared in comparison. The lyrically they got more complicated, but as far as the production and, and it, it it it's just. It was it just the evolution of eighties hip hop. It was the it was the evolution of it because in in eighties or the early eighties, that's why. What what song do I always say is the greatest hip hop song of all times? Big Ed, you know, one of Run DMC's, Peter Piper by Run DMC. Yep. Because if see in th those times, they didn't sample. No, no. sampling they wasn't took out from there. everything else and just cut and scratched them. Sampling wasn't out yet, so they they run a drum machine track, and he's actually scratching those that beat on. He's actually scratching that track onto the onto that beat, and then they started making machines that could. They started making machines of ways that you could create what the DJs were doing yeah. mm -hmm. on a keyboard and make it easier, and that's where sampling started. Sampling was mimicking what the DJs were doing in, in the early 80s, early, early 80s. But that sampling started in the 80s. But it, it really was taking, it was mimicking, it was a machine to mimic what DJs were able to do in the early 80s in, in a much easier fashion. You didn't have to be able to work tables. Oh, you had right. to play a keyboard. Right. Where or even, you don't even have to play the keyboard, you can hit a key. And, Boom. And at the beginning of the stages of hip hop, you had to work the tables. That was the only way to do it. Well, actually, yes, you did, but but not completely. That's why run. That's what Run DMC changed the game. It's like that was just a drum machine and a bass, yep. drum machine and a bass guitar. That's all. That's the whole beat. That's what it's like. That is okay. It's a drum machine and a bass guitar. So it's hard time, right? It's a drum machine and a bass guitar, and then they, you know, Jam Master J was back there cutting. Let's cut the record onto the beat. Let him do some cutting on it, and then <laughs> complete, com nigga. You have no idea what it was like to see Run DMC for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what it was like to see Run DMC for the first time. It was like this. They taught us what hip hop was. Yeah, we the rest of the world didn't know. New York was the only ones that knew what hip hop was. We didn't know. We didn't even call it that. Right. When he was saying, when the b boy stands and drag on the bike and make the boys run a dance, when they say hip hop, we didn't know what hip hop was. That was just words in the song. Mm. To us back then, we just knew rap. Right. Mm. Run DMC taught us what hip hop was. Taught you how to walk, talk, dress. The the DJ they introduced the DJ to us. We didn't know. We didn't know that when Soul Sonic first came, Soul Sonic Force came to town with a DJ. Man, we annihilated them. Them motherfuckers didn't even have a band. They had a fucking DJ, right? <laughs> they was playing a record. They didn't. We didn't even say they had a DJ. We were just saying they was playing a record. They didn't even have a fucking band. They just was playing a record. We dogged the fuck out of them. <laughs> And then we found out that noise that, that they was making in perfect beat. That's a record. That's a record going back and forth. You know, so we they were doing it. We just didn't understand what they were doing. Run right. DMC came and taught it to us. Okay. Run DMC taught us what hip hop was. And hip hop took off like a rocket from there.
Oh yeah. Hey, the most important group in hip hop history. It is. It's no. There's no close second. They had the first. They had the first gold record. They had a well, gap album, not the first gold record, but they had the first gold album. They had the first platinum album, and they also hosted the first hip hop tour, headline the first hip hop tour. You can't. They are what brought hip hop to the mainstream, and they were the what they and they brought hip hop to the mainstream. They introduced hip hop to white people, mm-hmm. and you know what they did that was so brilliant. And I don't even know if they did it on purpose. It may have been done by accident, but it was fucking brilliant. When they did Walk This Way, mm-hmm. um, of course, that was because Rockbox was, Rock was already on a map. Oh, yeah. But it didn't do what it should have done. So they brought in Aerosmith, and this is going to do what it should have done. Because now we got your guys on this song, too. And we're doing their words. So you can't trash the lyrics because the lyrics you already bought. And let's yeah, be right. real, they killed the beat. Oh, yeah. They, they killed, killed the beat. They did with two, 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 Jam Master J did his thing, right? But what they did that was brilliant was right after that song, there was no hesitation. If you ever listen to that album, there's no hesitation after Walk This Way goes off, it kicks right into on beat, no hesitation. It was right on beat. My Adidas come on right behind it. Yep. 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 Goes up. Boom. And it comes right in with, with um my Adidas. So what happened was, you know white people wasn't listening to that shit at the time. They hated it. Oh, no. oh, they yeah. hated it. They hated it. They dogged it. They called it everything, every word, every bad word you can think of. But they started playing uh Walk This Way. And if they played it from the album, they didn't know that right after it, the next song starts before you know what's even going on. Nigga, rock and roll stations that was historic. Rock, Riff, W-R-I-F, here in Detroit, baby. That was their logo. And that was their little saying, baby. Riff then would not play anything such as, such as that. They wouldn't touch it. It was rock and roll at its finest. I'm riding down the street and them motherfuckers playing my Adidas. Cause they would play, cause they was big on Aerosmith and they played Walk This Way and Walk This Way went off and they kicked right into my Adidas and the DJ even acknowledged it afterwards. He's like, oh, well, I guess that was, uh, I, <laughs> did that kick right in. That's, that was my Adidas. <laughs> Didn't know it was gonna happen. It was brilliant, and that's when I that's why I recognize brilliant. I remember hearing that. I was like, these motherfuckers playing fucking my Adidas on WRIF in Detroit. That is incredible. That was the most incredible shit I've ever seen heard in radio. Ever in my life. And I'm telling you, man, they, they were game changers. And then on the same same album they had Peter Piper. Come on, man. Don't disrespect the old school. You can't, man. I'm sorry, man. I said I was going to stop. I was trying to stop. Ways This way is fault. This is my fault. Because I tried to stop because I said there's a rabbit hole I won't come out of. I live in this one. I warned y'all. I warned y'all on the What Up Though show. (laughs) This show will go off the rails. (laughs) But, uh. All right. All right. Go ahead because I I live in this rabbit hole, man. I really. LL. LL came back with a response. My because God. LL is, one, LL is one of the guys that academics called out. My God. Come so on. LL came back with a response. Well, you know what? I'm going to turn my mic off of him. Same here. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and let this play. This is LL responding to DJ Academics about being a dusty rapper. All right. Okay. So... You guys might want to record this. Um, make sure you're recording this or screen recording it or something so that you, you know, you guys get it. Um, you know, I don't go live a lot. I haven't really been going live since, you know, the pandemic, but this is something that came to my attention. It came to my attention that a DJ, and um, I'm not going to say any names because I don't think it's necessary. A DJ basically said that, um, you know, a lot of the pioneers in hip-hop are, you know, 
they're dusty or how can they be the pe- person that, um, you know, invented hip hop if, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of money um, or if they don't look or represent like they have a lot of dough, right? Let me explain something to you um, and, and, and say this for you guys. Don't confuse someone's ability to develop a business model. Don't conflate. In other words, don't think just because somebody knows how to get money or fails to get money that they didn't make a contribution to the culture. No one discusses Miles Davis's bank account. We don't talk about John Coltrane's bank account. We don't talk about a lot of even rock musicians, a lot of them. We don't talk about their bank accounts. A lot of great country artists, we don't talk about their bank accounts. Um, This idea that you have to have money or else you don't have any value is a bad idea. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like, it's a misinformed way of looking at the world and the culture. There are artists out here. First of all, let me, let me, let me say this. First of all, you know, like, let's talk about like young artists, right? Which who I love. I love the young artists. Let's be clear. I'm very much a guy who embraces the young artists. I believe in every generation. I believe in you. I care about you. Let me say this to you, though. Today, you could come up with your five-year plan, your 10-year plan, your 20-year plan. You can go find a manager. You can find an accountant. You could find somebody that means something to you, um, you know, to help you. You could find a team to help your career go to the next level. When hip-hop first started, there were no managers. There were no accountants that believed in it. Record companies didn't even believe in it. Nobody believed in it. How can you make a five-year plan or a 10-year plan on something that doesn't even exist yet, that people have never even heard of? So just because a couple of these guys and girls and people out here made songs and made music and made contributions to this culture, or even dancers danced and, 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 and put, made these contributions to the culture, just because they didn't get rich, just because they weren't able to pile up millions or billions of dollars does not mean that they didn't make a contribution to this culture. That does not mean that they didn't do something. They created an industry that we all ate off of. They created an industry that you eat off of. When you go out there and you go monetize your brand, when you go monetize your brand, when you go get your, your whatever and do what you got to do to build your career, when you go out there and, and negotiate your deals and negotiate your checks and talk tough, guess what? That money, that bread, that food that you eating was created by those same people that you disrespecting. That industry was created by them same people that you call in, you know, foul words, foul language. The think the people that you're referring to. So my thing is this. It's always good. It's always good to get money. It's always important. It's important. It's important to get money. I agree. I'm all about getting paper. I've been talking about it my whole career. But don't ever, ever, ever confuse being rich with making a contribution to our culture. Don't ever play yourself like that again. Because trust me, you playing yourself. Because without these dudes and these girls who started this hip-hop culture, a lot of the guys that's out there talking tough, you wouldn't even have a career. You'd be, we'd be on the corner with a beer talking about what's the next move we're going to make. So I would say approach this game with humility and be glad and be thankful that these pioneers, you know, these exactly, slave mentality, be glad that these pioneers Help create this culture. And let's show them love. Let's elevate them. Let's celebrate them. That's why I started Rock the Bells. That's why I started this movement. So I wouldn't have to listen to to foolish rhetoric about people that changed the world. These people changed the entire world. The whole planet 
runs on hip hop culture right now. The whole planet, every commercial, every the, 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 you know everything you could think of, is all about hip hop. And there are people out there that started this thing, and I think that they deserve to be honored and respected. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not going to say no names. I'm not going to say nothing foul. I'm not going to go at nobody's character. I'm just going to say... Think before you speak. Peace. That's LL on the situation. Damn. He he damn he echoed pretty much everything I said and but said it but but expounded on it even further. Look, he not only did that, you you could hear the emotion in him. It, it was so strong for him in the way he believes that the New York accent finally fucking came back out. <laughs> I think uh I think when you watch this back you'll see that my my emotions and passion was 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 right there with him. I oh, think yeah. I was I, I was I was probably for him being one of the pioneers, he has an exclamation point that I don't. Right. Although I was a pioneer myself. I'm just I just didn't make as big an impact as he did. So my passion is equally as strong, man, because I was in it, man. And I know he's right. There was these are people that was there was no managers. There was they were they were rocking in an industry that didn't exist. See, one one thing I learned coming up is Damn. you never walk strong. on the people that got you to where you're at. That was strong as fuck, man. That's why LL is my favorite rapper of all time. So I said it on pan on pod on podcasting, and I'm saying it again today. He is still my favorite guy, man. See, and I, I, I'm so glad I got an opportunity to kick it with him for a minute. See, when it comes to this, and this is why I have a hard time acknowledging academics about this, is the fact that, and now everybody's going to agree with me, but me being younger and looking at the history of African-American cultures, Hip hop is just is just important, just as important to African American culture as the civil rights movement and so forth, because but it no, is showing no, the bro. continuous development. But to and what academics is saying is taking a knock on all of that. It's saying it's not a part of our culture essentially by knocking the old the heads, the people who created this culture of hip hop. It's not acknowledging all of what hip hop has become. Period. Yeah. It's just like discounting all of hip hop. Hell, not period, even just hip hop, the world. Well, well, to me, it's 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 a little bit of opposite. I feel a little differently. It's acknowledging what hip hop is, without acknowledging where how it started, yeah. without respecting mm. how we got here. I can see that. And white people turn. And without respecting how we got here, it's like respecting America. It's like uh, crediting America without respecting the fact that we, it was stolen. <laughs> well, here you in, know, in white I'm... people terms, right? It, it, it's similar to not acknowledging the fact that McDonald's started off as a mom and pop shop, mom and pop restaurant. Yeah, uh, I mean, I. And white people turn a little different, you know, a little you know, different. I, I had but I get it. But but I get you. But yeah. because see, the reason that's different though, ways is because McDonald's was a mom and pop shop that wanted to stay a mom and pop shop, and somebody else took the idea from them. Right. That's a good point. So that's see, okay. They, they, this was an industry that is homegrown, and they remained in it, yeah. and. The industry didn't just take it over and, and make it big. The industry realized it was big and became a part of it. Mm -hmm. See, okay. I, I, they existed without, they existed without history, big labels. I had a history teacher once said the most profound thing that I've ever heard. You never know where you're going. 
This is why he told me history is important. You never know where you're going if you don't know where unless you know where you've been. Yep. Uh, Bob Marley said that too, in a song. So yeah, uh, you you are absolutely correct on that. Um. All right. Look. All right. Sorry. This is bugging the shit out. Is it bugging the shit out of me this entire show? Bro, why is there a white dick behind your head? This is a hat, nigga. My nigga, I'm drunk. All right. I was like, why is this nigga got a big ass white dick behind him? <laughs> okay, that hat goes on the side. I have a new one to replace that one this week. Again, I never had that thought the, the entire the entire night. I, 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 I've been staring at this show. I'm like, what the fuck? Who has a painting like that on their wall? <laughs> it was a white hat, bro. I told you, I warned y'all the show's going to go off the rails real quick with me. Uh, another story coming off of that. All right. Thank you for the cool JPs, by the way. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, and I did. It wasn't until I listened to it that I realized I actually didn't hear the whole thing. I only heard a bit, a, a little short piece of it. It was uh, that was phenomenal, and I thought it was interesting that he was he was echoing my sentiments with his own in his own words. Right. It, yeah. Um, but really, really putting the exclamation point uh, and the difference that he and I have. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, uh, somebody has said I I can't remember. I'm not going to look the article up again. But somebody has said about it, this was the most eloquent way that we could put what we were feeling. And that came from a lot of old heads. Oops, old I missed part of that. Say it again. It, it, it was the most eloquent way that we could have put what we were feeling. Yeah, it was, it was very well said. Very well said. So, what's next? <laughs> Uh, you know who Michael Rappaport is, right? Yes, I do. He's been a friend of hip hop for a long time. Mm -hmm. We'll put that in quotes. A friend of hip hop. Uh, he has something to say about the academic comments. Uh oh, and you know he ain't got no filter. <laughs> he says, and I quote: "I'm not gonna be as polite as the great LL Cool J or Russell Simmons." Because LL Anybody never else. mentioned his name. I noticed that. Yep. LL said, I'm not even going to mention him. He said, anybody else that's spoken on this bum-ass clown, dusty, dirty, bum-ass, short, fat, bloated, goofy, no-talent, little shit, academics, <laughs> disrespecting the people who built hip-hop. First of all, you're not even a fucking DJ. You don't cut, you don't scratch, you don't produce. You're not a DJ, so stop calling yourself a DJ. <laughs> Shut this dude down. You're a fucking joke making money off hip hop when you have no skill set in hip hop. Shut this bozo goofball down. Hey, look, this is the reason why Michael Rappaport has always been an honorary brother. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. That shit's funny. That shit is funny. Hey, but he said exactly what I said. I was like, I ain't never heard this nigga DJ. That's why. I'm like, I ain't never heard him. Yeah. I know of him. I know I know who he is. I know of him. I, I agree with I'm, I'm again. I'm with Big Ed. I know who he is. Yeah, right. He's anyway, like one hundred. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Again, I say. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say. I was gonna say that's like calling yourself a doctor when you only sold weed. Ah, <laughs> uh, y'all remember in the pre-show when I told you that I had a dumbass that I didn't know if he belonged in a dumbass of the week. Or a cat, new category called What the Fuck? Let's keep one category. Okay. Officials have seized 7,000 donkey penises huh? intended to be smuggled into Hong Kong. Oh, nigga, for what? Is this related <laughs> to the goddamn semi that flipped over with the lube and dildos? <laughs> <laughs> At the international airport in Lagos, 
Nigerian authorities seized thousands of donkey penises on their way to Hong Kong. Oh, According to the Nigerian Custom Service Area Commander, the phalluses were falsely declared as cow male genitals. <laughs> but after due examination, my export officers discovered they were donkey male genitals. Here's the thing that's really fucking me up. How the hell can you tell the difference between a donkey and a cow dick? <laughs> Why in the fuck would you be smuggling 7,000 donkey dicks? Why in the fuck is that even a thing? <laughs> Yo. <gasps> I'm wait trying minute, to... Wait a minute. Why was it okay to smuggle a thousand cow dicks? <laughs> That's the question right there. What the fuck? <laughs> the cow penis is cool, but these are donkey dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like, what the fuck? Woo! Oh for my real. god. <laughs> these are donkey dicks. These ain't cow dicks. Man, you gotta turn around and take those back. <laughs> oh my god. Who the hell? What the fuck is a motherfucker supposed to do with 7,000 donkey dicks? Here's the even better question. I guess he can stick him up his ass. <laughs> Look, here's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the real question. How bad of a job does it got to be to be the motherfucker that has to inspect dicks for a living? He said, yep, this feels like a donkey dick. I told you, I had ass, dumbasses. He got to stick it up his ass. Oh. That is the funniest. His ass. Oh, his ass. His donkey dicks. Yeah, never mind. That's funny to me. These <laughs> <laughs> donkey dicks. You stick them up his ass. Oh, man. Because right. uh, he's got a donkey at home. He said, oh, <laughs> this is how they get the black ones. Oh, oh. shit. All right. Okay. okay. Big ass. God damn it. Last dumbass. All right. Come on, which KFC? What? Woman went to KFC. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. Ordered a sandwich. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Somehow, $500 ended up in the sandwich. Nice. Oh, that's a drug deal that went wrong. This bitch gave him back. Gave it back. What? Fuck that. I would have left the food and gone. <laughs> I would have left that motherfucking food and been out. <laughs> Yeah. I would have been like, I, me, I would have been like, I am delivered. I'm saying, I'm on my way to goddamn guy. I'm on my goddamn way to fucking Red Robin or something. I, that said, that does not make her a dumbass. It makes her a better person than me. That's all. Fuck that. That makes her a dumbass. That makes her a better person than me. That's, <laughs> that's what it does. But it doesn't make her a dumbass. Not in my book. All right. So we got to vote real quick. Okay, so first, I'm side. taking her off the table for me. For me, I'm taking her off the table. That makes her a good person, not a dumbass. She gave the money back. Look, wait, wait, yeah, because I don't want this to come back and haunt me. I'd rather give this back to you. Look for my blessing down the road. I'm okay, okay. with that. So it's out of three then. What was the first one? The worst robbery attempt ever. Okay, what was the second one? Second one is the guy with the 7,000 donkey dicks. Or no, the second one was actually uh, the NyQuil chicken. Mm. Okay, I'm taking NyQuil chicken out because at least he potentially got paid off of the other shit, off of the social media. And I don't find it as stupid as the robber. <clears throat> What's the third donkey dick? I thought the robber was absolutely about to win. Until this nigga rolled up with the donkey dicks and tried to pass them off as cow dicks. When when he didn't know he was going to run into Mr. Dick Expert that said, these ain't cow dicks. They're donkey dicks. Oh, shit. I know the difference. 
Put these donkeys back on your ass. I, I absolutely have to <laughs> agree with OG on this. The dick spurt this... catching up on a donkey dick uh, dude is funny as shit. Bro, I'm saying this has got to be the dumbass of the year so yes. far. Yes. I've not felt, I've not, I don't remember a better one. Not better than this. No, that's a whole new level. Man, I, well, you know, look at, think about the mastermind. Just tell him his cow digs. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> this shit goes deep. This shit goes deep, man. <sighs> What were and what were we going to accomplish with the donkey dick? Yo, OG, For, you just right. made me think of something. We just uncovered the fact that there's a whole network of dick smugglers. Dick smugglers <laughs> are out there. They are out there. <laughs> See, because and and for some reason, donkey dicks are more valuable than cow dicks. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know. They are because otherwise, what would be the problem? Right. Always follow the money. What would be the problem? The only reason it's a problem is because we don't allow donkey dicks over here. You guys, <laughs> <laughs> we only allow cows. And you know, and you, you know what? Take them donkey dicks. Back. And you know, you know what that means. If it's illegal, it carries more street value. Yep, it's Aww. like a kidney. If it's illegal, it carries more street value. So they out there with dunk selling donkey dicks to these on the street, and these hookers are sticking it up these John's asses, and they thinking they about to get cow dick. Where's the beef? And you think it's beef, motherfucker? This donkey. Dick. <laughs> Here's a little extra protein. <laughs> oh my god! Hold on! Oh, I gotta raid this back. <laughs> because this dude went totally off the motherfucking rails, but uh. Donkey Dick Smuggler, whoever the fuck you is, you are this week. Alright, I got I got one new uh one new last segment. Uh-huh. Uh I think it's pretty important. Alright. Especially since most of this the, the this show has been dedicated to the history of hip hop. So Let's go back to this week in hip hop. First off, we got Outkast released their fifth album, what? Speaker Box, The Love Below. Yeah. What year was that? September 23rd, 2003. Yep. Nice. Uh, second thing, I don't know who the fuck this is. I've never heard of him. You know who Diamond D is? Uh, I remember the name. I was going to say, I recognize the name. Well, he released his debut album. Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop, September twenty second, nineteen ninety two. I don't remember a single song. I can't. I couldn't name a sim- single song off of that. Me neither. Okay. Me neither. Can we get some? Can we get somebody? Somebody a little better. What else we got? Red Man, September twenty second, nineteen ninety two. Is that? Is he an Indian? Red Man. <laughs> get it, Red Man? There you go. God damn. Right. <laughs> oh, man, you don't get a guess with that. <laughs> <laughs> September 22nd, 1992, released his debut album. What the album? What the album? I like that. Yeah. Okay. Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy. I remember him. September yeah, 22nd. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Little hip hop history on Trick Daddy. Okay. Him and uh, he was beefing with Trick Trick, mm-hmm. uh, the rapper out of Detroit, yep, over the name. Uh, and when he came to town, Trick Trick and the Goon Squad beat his ass. <laughs> yeah, they jumped him, <laughs> they jumped him and whooped his ass. Well, September 22nd, 1998, he released his second album. Uh, What's the name of that? That album, album? was www.thug.com. Yeah, I, I was going to say it doesn't matter. He's never really had an album. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1993, September 21st. He had some hits, though. Oh, yeah. I'm a thug. 
Shut up. He had that joint. Shut up. You don't know, man. <laughs> you don't know, man. Was huge. That was huge. That was probably his biggest hit. Yeah. The Tony used to play that shit all the time. Yeah, well, I used to hear like, oh shit, they used to want, they used to want to hear it all the time. Yep. Uh, September twenty first, nineteen ninety three. De La Soul released their third album, Balloon Mind State, which was their fall off album. They fell off after that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, September twenty, September twentieth, nineteen eighty eight. Marley Ma. Released the album In Control, Volume 1. Don't remember it. I would love to I would love to get a track list on that. What's the name of it? I'm going to write it down. I'm going to get a track list on that. In Control, Volume 1. In Control. All right. I, I doubt that there was a Volume 2 because that I, I don't think that was a big album. That's funny. People used to come up with Volume 1 like you know there's a Volume 2 coming, but uh, the album wasn't shit, so you don't go Volume 2. But I still would be curious. I'm still curious. Oh, hold on. Okay. Bro, what? No, 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 no. Hold up. Back, back up. I didn't say I want you to play it right now. I want to no. do my own fucking research. I was going to say, that's no, that, that, not the no. music. That, that, was that wasn't the... even nothing from it. That, that was on an accident. I was going to say, that's from The Hub. <laughs> All right. That, that was actually is that it? Oh, is that it or is there more? Uh, I got three more. Okay. In 1994, on September 20th, the world was introduced to Craig Mack, Project Funk the World. Yeah, uh, that was that that was fire right there. But uh, that was that that was all for him though. That was all she wrote. Rest yeah. in peace to Craig Mack. Ah. Uh, Lupe Fiasco, September 19th, 2006, released his debut album, Food and Liquor. Mm, that's the one with Kick Push. Kick Push. And on September 19th, 1989, Big Daddy Kane released his second album, It's a Big Daddy Thing. And that was fire. That's a classic. That's a, That one actually goes hangs up in the rafters. That's a classic. And that's it? So, yep, that's all I got. All right, well, that was dope, man. I like that. I like that. I like that. Oh, yeah. Let me get that where it needs to be. Should okay, be get it where it needs to be. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. That's it for the Smokes at the 612 this week. I hope y'all join us next week where we have a whole nother week in the history of hip hop. We got four new dumbasses coming next week. And a lot more fun. You see how our, our discussion took a different turn today sometimes. I loved it. It was a good show. Love y'all. Thank y'all for coming.